record. Why is it not recording? Okay, let's see. Okay. I don't know why, but it's are you can you hear and see me? Yeah, it, it, it just comes in and out. So I don't know if it's a network, but it's choppy a little Delayed. bit. Okay. Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. On my end, what's happening? Uh, I don't know if I keep off anything because So I'm just like making sure I don't have anything open because in, in theory, my thing said it looks good. In theory, my um, it's get it's gotten better. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Right. Thank you for that. Bear with me with the technical difficulties. So yeah, thank you for being um, part of this podcast. Um. I don't know if you listen to any of the episodes, but it's just, you know, trying to get to know you, trying to understand the creative process. I understand you look at different things as a, a counsellor or a therapist. Right? Yes. So, so I work in the mental health field, but I, I do it in a creative way. So I yes, love okay. to talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So definitely talk about the creative process. I know you help moms out. So you looked at burnout and if we can frame it in like a creative perspective like okay as a creative you know you give all your energy some of us are very very sensitive might have like lots of trauma from we don't have to go too deep but I'm just making it up as we go along but you know we have a lot of trauma and stuff like that and we channel it into our work how do we take care of ourselves how we look after you mm -hmm. you know that type of thing which aligns with your work um yes yeah, so really into looking at the process and self-care and all those type of things which align with your work um as 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 a creative um at the beginning i will say my name is cassandra lauren gordon host of the, the black grape handbook and i'm here with and then you say your name mm -hmm. and then you introduce yourself and at the beginning i also ask questions just quick five questions do you like cereal or toast and you say yeah oh no you like you know just random questions just to get you just to talk about random stuff before we talk okay. about your your work mm -hmm. and at the end we talk about testimonials so i know on your website you've got a few testimonials but just mm -hmm. asking just to ask you what is like one of the best things Clint or someone said about your work okay. and we end on that so i hope mm -hmm. that's okay and internet gods are okay <laughs> so fingers crossed okay so i'm going to start now okay hi this is the black creative handbook with your host cassandra lauren gordon and i am here with danielle mcdowell thanks for having me no problem. So, Daniel, mm -hmm. tell us about yourself. Well, I like to describe myself as a human who likes to help other humans. It's very basic, but it gets more complex than that. But in the very basic terms, I'm just a human being out here wanting to be a supportive person to another human being. Wow. Uh, yeah. And I do that in a lot of different ways. So, um, you know, we all have titles and I wear that title mom. I have a crew of kids. So um, it's five. Oldest is 22. Youngest is one and a half. And we got a little bit all in between. Yeah. Um, our uh, daughter, who's 20, just had a baby. So now I'm a yaya. Um, literally, she just had a baby like two days ago. Oh, congrats. Um, congrats. Yeah. So it's awesome to sit in that space in motherhood. I'm a wife. And in my community, I am a trainer, educator, and a mental health therapist. And I educate my community on the benefits of taking care of your emotional health. Wow, there's so much there, so much wholesomeness as well. But you just talk, so congrats on your um, being a yaya, and you. you have a little one as well. And there's so much, such a nurturing vibe you're giving at, at this moment. Okay, cool. So I'm going to ask you some quick five questions just to get to know you. And then we get into your creative practice. Okay. Are you a night person or morning person? I have always been a night person. I love the nighttime. Okay. New York or LA? Oh, I'm going to have to go with LA because I don't like to be cold. Okay. Red or purple? Ooh purple and why 
It's closer to blue. Fair enough. And why why do you like blue? Um, blue is calming for me. It makes me think of ocean. I'm a Pisces. And so blue water, it's just calming for me. Okay. So it's all about science. I don't know much about science, but you said you're Pisces. What is the <laughs> one of the best quality of your Pisces signs? What's the best? So I would think the down, down to earth nature, you know, um, being very personable. Um, people feel that they can connect with me. I think that has a lot to do with me being a Pisces. Understood. Mm -hmm. Understood. Okay. Do you prefer to type or to write? Ooh, um, I guess typing. Why is that? I can get my thoughts out quicker. If I'm writing, then I'm being conscious of how I'm writing it. I'm one of those people who are like, oh, I don't like the way that looks. <laughs> I'll go back and write it again. But if I'm typing, then I can not focus on that part and just get it out. Are you a cat or dog person? If I have to choose either, it's going to have to be a dog. But I would say neither. <laughs> okay, okay. So you don't want to get no backlash from the cat people. Okay, I get you. Okay. <laughs> I hear you. All right. Michael Jackson or James Brown? Ooh, that's tough. Um, ooh, I'm going to have to go with MJ, though. But that's a tough one. I think I think I rock to more of his songs than James Brown. Okay, cool. So with cereal, do you <laughs> put the milk in first or do you put the cereal in first in the bowl? No milk. <laughs> I eat my cereal dry. <laughs> okay. You have Look, special I can't do, Yeah, I can't do the milk. Ugh, no kinds of milk. It's just not for me. It, it makes it soggy. Like, ugh, I'm a texture person and I can't do that texture. Okay. I just have to think <laughs> about, I don't know how to respond, but okay. Cool. <laughs> you had an autobiographical book or an autobiography. What title would it be? Life and Lyrics Through Danielle's Eyes. I already wrote it. Did you hear me? Excuse me, say it again. So is it Life and Lyrics? Yep, yeah. Life and Lyrics. I just got it. So excuse me, say it again, sorry. Sure, Life and Lyrics Through Danielle's Eyes. Wow. Okay, I hear you. And what advice would you give to your 20 year old self? That life gets easier. You just got to keep on living. Just keep moving forward, Danielle. It's going to get a little easier each year. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm internalizing that. And mm -hmm. I'm like, maybe me and you are two different people. I'm like, isn't it getting harder? Could you explore that a little bit? Like, why do you why do you think like from twenty onwards in your experience, your life gets easier? Well, at sixteen I was raped, and from sixteen up into those twenties, um, it was pretty stressful. So um, after I experienced the rape, uh, I had a a downward spiral, which in return resulted in pregnancy with my daughter, who's now twenty. Um, and she became the light that I wanted to live for, but because I wanted to live for this light, it required me to now be a mom at a young age, because when I was pregnant with her, I was, uh, 17 and I had her around 17 and, uh, I had to go to college and I was managing college and managing a little person and, and trying to work on my own trauma. And it was really stressful. Um, working through all the things that happened in my childhood and then that early adulthood life, trying to figure out what that meant for me and what that looked like at the time. And at the time I was single, not married to my now husband. And it was, it was stressful and I just didn't see a out and I had to continue to just keep pushing forward for my daughter. Um, and so that advice of it's going to get easier, it's going to get better. Um, it's something I wish I could have went back and kind of told my 20 year old self that it's not going to always be this tough.
wow that is so great. I feel like I have to use my words like because you've been through a lot and to have so much lightness you know some light in your in your life and sometimes I try to reprogram myself to be more positive um so you you're inspiring me to be that way and have a lot of gratitude so thank you for for sharing your your, your story okay so let's talk about the journey of your creative practice and mm -hmm. explore of what you do so can you talk about that sure so like I said my childhood was was difficult and during that time I came in contact with a therapist um, and that kind of shifted for me what I wanted to do with my life at the time but I didn't see big picture like how from being a hurt teenage young adult to becoming a therapist I didn't see the trajectory there like how that could happen um, so I kind of veered off into education and became a high school teacher, but I always had a love for music and I incorporated music in anything I did. Like, um, and as a high school teacher, I taught early childhood education and I taught food and nutrition. So I was playing with babies during the day, helping people learn how to cook. And we were doing it with the background of music and, and music was therapeutic for me and for my high school students that I was working with. Um, so at that time, I realized how impactful music can be just in day-to-day -day working through things. Through life, I transitioned out of the classroom because my daughter was having some mental health struggles and I wanted to help her. And so my initial getting into mental health was to focus on learning everything I needed to learn to help support my own child. Once my daughter started doing better, parents would come to me and ask for my advice and my opinions and things that I had learned to kind of help my own child. And I became interested in mental health. As I went through my master's program, I started to incorporate writing and music and therapy. And that's what started Life and Lyrics Through Danielle's Eyes. And so I have workshops in the community um, for young adults, for teens, and for women, where we utilize music to help us work through stress and trauma. And so it's a creative way to express our feelings and work through trauma um, instead of just a traditional just talk therapy. Now, I do talk therapy because I think there's still benefits to that. But on the other side of that, I think expressive arts therapy is the way to go for a creative person who needs to be able to merge the, the speaking piece of therapy to the creative piece. And, and there's so many different ways we can express ourselves as creatives. And it's been impactful for me and the clients that I support to be able to, to do that with music. Wow, wow, so powerful. Okay. I feel like sometimes creatives are very sensitive soul. <laughs> they just just pour their heart into what they create. A little bit of my self of worth is into what I create and, and into what I do. So exposing that can be very, very scary. Um, so do you have any tips of how to manage your care or have good mental health if you're a black creative? Well, you have to take time for self. You have to really dedicate time um, to pour into yourself and to nurture yourself. And I think um, sometimes when you look at self-care, we're looking at, I should go take a bubble bath or go shopping. Um, and it, it's more complex than that. I think taking a bubble bath is not a bad thing. It, it could be part of your toolbox. But in our toolbox, when we're thinking about self-care, we need to be focusing on how am I taking care of myself physically how am I taking care of myself emotionally? And how am I taking care of myself spiritually? And if we're focusing on those three areas and we're really nurturing those three areas, it can help build us up so that we can continue to be creative. And so when people are pouring from us, right, we have it to give, but we have to be working on those core areas. Okay, understood, understood. I'm just thinking about, 
usually black creatives they usually work freelance don't always have a steady paycheck sometimes Mm -hmm. so what are tips to prevent burnout or to just them their mind healthy when they might worry about money or something like that you may have to get creative and figure out other ways to have additional streams of income until the freelancing work kind of builds up I, I will speak from my own experience I, I didn't start off just leaving the classroom and going directly into private practice work it required me having to um, take my days and balance them in a way where I was doing multiple things that brought in income. So um, there are lots of ways you can create income now. They have things like the DoorDash um, and Uber Eats, where you can maybe do like food delivery. If you have a skill set for tutoring, you can tutor young people and bring in extra money that way. So you look at your schedule, you look at the skill set that you have. Because you have other skills outside of that um, goal that you're working towards. So um, let's say you're an artist and you do freelance artist work. Um, can you teach a class to young people and charge a fee to get additional income to help you while you're working towards getting your artwork premiered so that you can make more money? You got to think out the box. And so I used every bit of my skill set to find ways to generate income until I was able to make money through my private practice uh, to not have to do all the other things. And that can be helpful, especially if it's the financial strain that's coming with it. Think about your skills and figure out how you can generate more money to lessen oh, that load. I hear you. Um, mm -hmm. Just following on, talking about burnout so any tips to help obviously looking at our schedule but any ways to because I feel I feel like with black creatives or black people in general we always have to work twice as hard sometimes more than our white counterparts mm -hmm. and you know you're never allowed just to be mediocre <laughs> especially in the creative fields like you can't have a media uh, a mediocre R&B singer you have to be the greatest you gotta yep. do all the yodels you can't just you can't just rock up like, like other white counterparts and be average and earn number one singles so there's always that, that expectation so how do you just prevent burnout when working so hard in these spaces so I don't think that it's possible to prevent burnout I think it's like Ooh. exercise right you so let's think about it. when I look at burnout I look at it's the same way as watching what I'm eating because if I overeat then I'm going to be sick if I'm not exercising, then I'm going to be sick. So every day I have to consciously make efforts to work towards that thing. Am I going to eat the donut today or <laughs> am I going to eat the, the salad? Um, am I going to go out for that 10 minute walk or I'm just going to veg out on TV today? When I look at burnout, I look at it the same way. I know that my schedule can be overwhelming. So what am I going to do in this day to carve out space for myself? And if you don't do it, then guess what? You're going to increase burnout, but burnout will be there, especially for us Black people, especially for us Black women. We wear lots of hats. There are lots of things that we're responsible for. And like you said, we have to um, show up in spaces and, and almost feel like we have to be perfect in those spaces. And it's heavy, right? So you need a space with people who are supportive of you. For me, I have great girlfriends. I have a girlfriend who, who knows this shared experience of being a black woman in a black space and having to work hard. I can vent to her, she can vent to me. I can get it out, we can talk about it because it's a real thing, right? Outside of having that support and someone to talk to, just like exercise, I have to carve out time for myself. So if my plate is full, something has to come off of it because I got to put Danielle back on that plate every single day because this is just our reality. And if you don't work on it every single day, it's going to increase and get wor worse. But burnout is not something, if you're going to have large goals for yourself, right? And we all do as, as women, as, as black people, 
where we want to overachieve from where we started, right? You're going to have a level of burnout that comes there with that part, with that. It's just, it's just, it's just part of the territory. And you're going to want to have good supports. You're going to want to take that time for yourself. And you want to be honest with yourself. Am I using my time wisely? Am I, am I really using good time management here? Where in my day can I make adjustments so that I can have less time doing the things that stress me out and more times giving me the balance I need to get me back in that calm space so that I'm not consistently stressed out, burnt out all day long. Okay. I'm being purposeful. Purposeful. Okay. I like that you said that being purposeful and, and using, being very intentional of how you yep. spend your time and be intentional about how you value yourself, mm -hmm. your mental health, your physical health and having that balance. Balance is important as much balance you, you can get. Looking at mental health and mm -hmm. looking at, the nuances of being a black person or African person Af from the African di diaspora, no matter where you are. And especially mm -hmm. if predominantly you're living in a white space or mm -hmm. white spaces, any tips to deal, you know, with black people in the workplace or in the creative spaces when it's dominated by white spaces? To deal with other black people or to deal with- Just do it. Okay, cool. Thank you. I didn't, uh, yeah. Um, Cause sometimes like microaggressions or, slight mm -hmm. things of racism or that type of thing my advice is to pick your battles and that sounds weird but I'm just gonna say walking in this space every single day there can potentially be something right and depending on the work environment and like you said the living environment that you're in it could be intensive all the time and if you are utilizing your energy to combat that every single day, that energy is being depleted from other areas in your life where you could use it to benefit you, right? But I think that there also are situations and times where you need to check somebody. And I will check a person when I feel like I have the space and energy to do it. And then in other times, if I don't have the space and energy to do it, I trust that because I believe in God. God gonna bring the person that needs to check that person. And it don't have to be Danielle today because Danielle just don't have the energy. So it requires a level of self-awareness. Am I in a space today where I can sit down with this Karen and say, hey, Karen, the way you talking to me is not gonna happen. And let me explain to you, you did X, Y, and Z and I'm gonna need you to do A, B, and C next time instead of X, Y, and Z, because I'm not having it. And if you got the energy that day to address it with Karen, go ahead, do that girl. But if you don't have the energy, it's okay to just let that not be the place you place your energy in until you have it to do it. But if you're in an environment and microaggressions are there, we're not in a space in a time where I, I can say that they don't exist. They're, they're there, they're present. You get to decide the level of energy that you wanna give to it each day. Um, and you, if it becomes overwhelming, we also get to make choices of, is this the best work environment for me? Is this the best living environment for me? Because if you're in one place where you're catching microaggressions all the time, you're catching it at work, you're catching it at home, you may need to change the way, change where you work or change where you live. Facts, nothing but facts. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. So touch on home life and, you know, sometimes there's shared experiences being a black person, no matter what part of the, the globe you are. Um, family relationships can be quite hard because depending on what social economic status your family's in, things can be hard sometimes if you're at like a first um a first or you know your first daughter or first son you sometimes parental responsibilities and stuff like that so it's just navigating how do you have healthy boundaries with your family do you have any tips with that mm -hmm. um, I mean I know firsthand so I grew up um with a father who has an addiction he continues to have an addiction um, my mom was a teen mom she struggled um, me and my twin sister are, are like first generation college graduates. She's 
um, defending her dissertation next month to be a um, PhD. We've really had to learn how to navigate in a space where we didn't have parents or grandparents who went through these channels prior to us to give us that kind of um, mentorship in that way because they didn't have these experiences. And we are actively, my sister and I, learning how to navigate um, as we acquire more wealth, how we can continue to be a support to our family and establish those healthy boundaries. I see it as a journey that is gonna to continue to evolve, um, not just for me, but in my advice to others. Um, these relationships are important relationships to you. And part of it is understanding the history. So I know that I am in a space where uh, I am blessed to have things that my grandmother couldn't have and that my mother couldn't have. And because I have this great gift, there also comes great responsibility for it. And part of that responsibility is doing my part to help support my family um, when I am in space to do that and I can do it for them, I do. I show up for them in ways that I can, um, be it financial ways, be it just being a listening ear and emotional support for them, um, be it giving them wisdom and advice from the things I've learned along this unique journey that I'm taking that's different from them. These are ways I'm able to give to my family, but I'm also conscious that at times Danielle is not at space to give to others until she's taking care of herself. And so the boundary for me is I always look what needs to be done for me to put me in a space to help other people so that I'm not pulling and giving what I do not have to give. And so my biggest advice is you know self, you know what you're capable of doing, set those clear boundaries with self to make sure that your needs are met. And then in return, when you are helping and supporting other people, it is not at your own demise. So I have no expectation that I must deplete and give all of me to others and leave myself without. I always have to come first and you always have to come first. I hope that answers the question. No, it does. I'm just thinking. Um, I don't have any children, but I'm mm -hmm. sure people who listen to this platform that have children and being creative and doing so many different things, and you, you know, going, you know, working and leveling up yourself. So, any advice for these parents who could be single parents or not, who wants to reach their goals but they're still got dependents? So mm -hmm. how? Uh, you know how does that work because I I can't I, I I feel like I have no time I feel like I have no time and I'm and, and, and I'm tired so mm -hmm. I don't know how I'm going to feel when I have a look how does that work how do you parents do it <laughs> I feel tired I mean I, I think that tired comes with the territory when you have little ones right um as my son my youngest one is getting older it, it's helping to get the rest back in, but there is a space where you just become um, aware that tired will be there for a little bit. I think that one of the things as a culture we have walked away from that we need to get back to is the village mentality. Um, because children were not meant to just be raised by one person or for the matter, two people, right? It required a whole village of people that came in and supported the family unit, right? And when I work with clients, I remind them that you have to establish a village for yourself. You have to get out of the mindset that you are the only person who can do everything for that child because it is not the case and you won't help yourself or your young person by making them believe that as a mother, that means you must do everything. Or as a father, that means you must do everything. That is not the case. So I am always seeking to add to my village. Um, when I do add to my village and my supports, I am doing it in a way to keep my children safe. So I don't just let the neighbor down the street just grab up some kids and hang out with them, right? 
but I build genuine connections with people and I find creative ways to support them. So one of the tips I give moms, especially single moms, is if you're friends with other single mothers, right, or you're friends with other women who don't even have kids, but you're not friendly enough where you feel safe enough to just have them just keep your child, invite them over and say, hey, can I go upstairs and take a nap for two hours? And you stay downstairs with my daughter and watch cartoons with her. Because guess what? If you feel unsafe, you can just wake up from your nap and go down there and check on your daughter, right? But you have someone helping you out um, until you have additional connections. Think outside of the box. We tend to think that the only people who can support our kids are our, our family members. Sometimes we have to create a chosen family. Chosen family are other individuals who love and support and care about you, who may not be biologically connected to you, but they can help love and nurture on you. It could be a support as on Wednesdays, I'm going to come bring a casserole just so you don't have to worry about cooking dinner on Wednesdays. And that'll be one thing I can take off your plate. And those types of creative ways helps to give us rest, give us time so that we can also tackle the other things. Okay, I'm hearing you. So I have a bit of questions about building your village. So I'm in my thirties. I've come to a big city, mm -hmm. London. Mm -hmm. Not people have lots of similar interests as me. Mm -hmm. I need to make, I need to get, get need to buy a house, need to, you know, money mm -hmm. is a big thing. How do I create this village? Because if I have children, I'm like, childcare is expensive. Mm -hmm. So how does this work? How someone in their 30s moved to a big city who's quite creative? Mm -hmm. Oh, because it's a bit, there, there's, there's a bit of a suspicion because I don't have kids. So moms and dad look at me like, you don't have kids, so we don't, we don't mess with you. <laughs> so how do uh -huh. I prepare myself before I have a little one? to get this village so I can pass on my kit <laughs> to them <laughs> when needed. Okay. Um, so I don't know. Okay. You, you enlighten me a little bit. So here in, in the States, we utilize Facebook groups quite a bit and they're like Facebook groups for everything under the sun. Like I literally um, found a Facebook group with um, moms who like to take their kids to educational activities in my community, right? And I posted on there and said, like, I love to go to the aquarium. And I also like to take my, my son to the park and would love to do some play dates. Um, and I had other like black women like post under it and say, hey, cool, let's do it Thursday, two o'clock. We there, right? Thursday, two o'clock, I'm there. I meet some cool black ladies and we just walk through the aquarium and the kids kind of do the kid things and we talk about, you know, trying to manage life. I've also seen groups um, of creatives where it's, it's a group for just people who like to create, like I'm a business owner. Um, I like to make things that are like t-shirts that have mental health kind of slogans. I've also made like a, a card game and I went in a group and I connected with other mom business owners who are creatives, right? And I found people that way. So thinking out of the box, utilizing technology, um, we have an app called Next, Next Door app. Um, and that's connected to our communities. And we you can connect to individuals in there too. Um, and I've met people through there. Um, I'm also an extrovert. So I like to go out and I maybe have a, a glass of wine at a bar. <laughs> I'll just connect to people and, and find shared interests. I've made connections that way. I've also made connections through my job. Um, so if we're sitting around, we're having lunch, I'm learning like that my neighbor likes to do a certain, uh, not my neighbor, my coworker likes to do a certain thing that I like and maybe building connections that way, that way but, truly but truly just, just being, being creative because I feel like we're so disconnected in this age of technology where they say it helps to bring us connected. I feel like it has disconnected us in such a powerful way where we have to get back to the basics 
of really just sitting down with someone with a shared experience and building those connections. And so we might have to use technology to help us find the people, but when we find the people, we got to bring the human connection back to it, right? Um, I hope those suggestions are helpful. Yeah, I mean, I never thought about Facebook groups. I'm mm -hmm. more of an in in Instagrammer, but now I'm thinking Facebook groups, you're all right. I never mm -hmm. thought about that. And try to do shared interests, like mm -hmm. try. Yeah, my yeah. twin sister has no kids, but she's she was able to start a hiking group for black people and like it she was living in dc at the time and she connected with all these beautiful black people and they went hiking together and she made connections that way and i thought it was the coolest um so you just finding people with shared interests and you're going to find some 30 year olds down the line that are having kids and the beauty is if you make enough connections with people eventually you'll find enough people who are also going through the life transaction um life transitions at the same time as you and so you'll meet another woman who's in her 30s who's starting to have kids and then y'all will have that connection where you go through pregnancy together go through childbirth together and all those things and you'll feel like I have that support now I have that person because you know I'm older now and I was like concerned that I wouldn't come across anyone and then I happened to find like two other black people who we're having babies later <laughs> and they were like oh yeah it's different now when you do this in the 40s it's like not like when you were a teenager and I we have that shared connection now um so I would just definitely encourage you to utilize technology to find the people that you need to build that village because we need it I'm telling you because child care is high yeah. <laughs> I'm like, no. and also as I said I'm not a mom so sorry it seems very ignorant I thought, this is what I thought, this is so ignorant of me, I thought when you have a, because in, in, in my head, I work for myself, so in my head, I'm, I'm, I'm a jeweler, so I thought, you know what, motherhood's going to be a breeze in my head, so I thought, I'm going to push out this baby, right, and the baby will sleep, and I can be typey-typey on my computer and, and do my thing, and then I chat to him, and it's like, it's not like that, you can't just leave the baby, and I was like, what? What do you mean? I thought you just put the baby there and it sleeps all day and you do a little breast milk and then, or if not, you put a bottle and they sleep. But they don't, they don't sleep. I don't, I didn't, I'm sorry. I know I'm 30 odd, but I just didn't understand this life. So I'm like, yeah, this is just, just, it's, it's definitely different. Yeah. And each child is different, right? So some of them, like when they come out, they sleep a little more than the others. It just really depends on the kid and the situation um hopefully though by the time you are ready to have baby you have now established some good relationships and feel like you have a level of support where maybe someone could come in and say hey girl I'm gonna hang out here with you today and I'm gonna do baby so you can go crank out the work you need to do you know that was the level of support that I had um and I was always intentional with making sure I had the people around me so that I could get it done and I didn't lose my mind, right? Um, so just being conscious of that. Okay, I'm understanding, yeah. Because sometimes you think, oh, you don't need any friends, you don't need it, but I'm like, mm -hmm. I need friends to put out there in, in the universe. Not desperate, mm -hmm. but I just like, if, if you come into my life and we, mm -hmm. and we naturally connect. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we need friends outside of kids. Like being just a human, we need, we are created to be in connection with other people. The human needs connections from other humans. We were not created to be in this world alone. We were intercreated to be dependent on each other to be successful. So we need to be social and we need to have those connections with people um, to have emotional health. It comes with the territory. Understood, understood. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that I should have asked you, which I shouldn't, I mean, oh, sorry, I said that wrong. Is there anything that I should have asked you, which I haven't asked you? I don't know. I think you, you did pretty good. I, I appreciate talking to you and sharing my experiences and I can't think of anything. Okay. So what is the best thing someone said about your services or your, mm -hmm. or your private practice? 
So what is the best thing? Mm-hmm. Um, said, like a testimonial or? I think one of the best things I've heard so far is Danielle, you came in my life when it was dark and you held my hand and sat in the darkness with me until I was able to find the light. Wow. That's, I felt that. That's very heartfelt. Wow. And how did you feel about that when someone said that to you? I felt like I am in alignment with what God has for me. Um, and I'm following his will. And as long as I walk in his journey, um, he will give me what I need to be the support to other humans. And so long as I stay in alignment with that, he will help me when I'm unsure. So um, I was glad that he gave me the wisdom and the space and the skill set to be able to support the woman who needed my help. Sounds great. Sounds, sounds good. So how can we find you? How can we connect with you? Sure. So my name, daniellelmcdowell.com, leads you directly um, to my website where you can gain more information. Uh, I speak in the community. Like I said, I do trainings on mental health, suicide, um, burnout for for women. Um, So you don't have to exactly be a mom. Women just experience burnout, period. Um, I'm not leaving my guys out, but I tend to work more with women. But if a guy reaches out and say, hey, girl, help me too, I'm here. Um, But the best way to reach me would be my website, www.daniellelmcdowell.com. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, because I think sometimes, you know, on Instagram live, everyone feels like they've got their stuff together, their mental health together, and you realize they don't, you know, people take drugs and all this stuff, Mm -hmm. and things are not healthy, not looking after their Mm -hmm. mental health and well-being, and it's such an important part of being a creative, you know, and I just feel like, thank you for sharing your wisdom and your story and your expertise, it's really Mm -hmm. much appreciated. Thank Thank you, you You gotta look at your emotional health the same way you look at your physical health. It's something that you have to work on every single day of your life, every day. So just like you wake up and you consider your physical health, I need you to do the same thing for your emotional health. How are you taking care of those three key things? Physical, emotional, spiritual. Self-care in those three areas. I hear you. Thank you so much. So you know how to connect with Danielle if you need some more support. So all the show notes and you heard before. So this is the Black Creative Handbook with your host Cassandra Lauren Golden and with Danielle. So speak soon.